I am terrified at the moral apathy, the death of the heart, which is happening in my country. These people have deluded themselves for so long that they really don't think I'm human. I had basis on their conduct, not on what they say. And this means that they have become in themselves moral monsters. Uh, hi, I'm Peter Leonard. I'm a community activist in Poughkeepsie, New York. And I'm reading today from Jane Baldwin's nonfiction work called No Name in the Street. And the particular passage that I'm uh, reading today has to do with Jane Baldwin learning about the assassination of Major Evers, who was a civil rights worker in Mississippi, who was killed in 1963. Uh, this is Baldwin in his own words. It was a wonderful, bright, sunny day. And the top of the car was down, we were laughing and talking, and the radio was playing. Then the music stopped and a voice announced that Medgar Evers had been shot in his home and his wife and children had seen the big man fall. No, I can't describe it. I've thought of it often or have been haunted by it often. And I couldn't say anything. I couldn't cry. I just remembered his face, a bright, blunt, handsome face, and his weariness, which he wore like his skin, and the way he said Rowad instead of Road, and is telling me how the tatters of clothes from a lynch body hung, flapping in the tree for days, and how he had to pass that tree every day. Measure, gone. Well, I guess what the niggers are supposed to be doing is putting themselves in the path of that old sweet chariot and have it swing down and carry us home. That would help, as they say. And they got ways of sort of nudging the chariot. They got influence with wind and water. So they, in for some surprises, <laughs> with cloud and fire. My days are not their days. My ways are not their ways. I would not think of them one way or the other. Did they not so grotesquely block the view between me and my brother? And so I also wonder, can blindness be desired? Then what must the blinded eyes have seen to wish to see no more? For I have seen in the eyes regarding me or regarding my brother, have seen deep in the farthest valley of the eye, have seen a flame leap up, then flicker out, have seen a veil come down, leaving myself and the other alone in that cave, which every soul remembers, out of which desperately afraid, I turn, turn, stagger, stumble out into the healing air, fall flat on the healing ground, singing praises, counseling my heart, my soul to praise. What is it that this people cannot forget? Surely they cannot be deluded as to imagine that their crimes are original. Is there nothing in the least original about the fiery tongs to the eyeballs, the sex torn from the socket, the infant ripped from the womb, the brains dashed out against rock? Nothing original about Judas or Peter or you or me, nothing. We are liars and cowards all, or nearly all, or nearly all the time. For we also ride the lightning, answer the thunder, penetrate whirlwinds, curl up on the floor of the sun and pick our teeth with thunderbolts. Then, perhaps they imagine that their crimes are not crimes. Perhaps. Perhaps that is why they cannot repent, why there is no possibility of repentance. Manifest destiny is a hymn to madness. Feeding on itself, ending 
when it ends, in madness. The action is blindness and pain. Pain bringing a torpor so deep that every act is willed, is desperately forced, is willed to be a blow. The hand becomes a fist, the prick becomes a club, the womb a dangerous swamp, the hope and fear of love is acid in the marrow of the bone. No, their fire is not quenched, nor can be. The oil feeding the flames being the unadmitted terror of the wrath of God. Yes. But let us put it in another less theological way. Though theology has absolutely nothing to do with what I'm trying to say. But the moment God is mentioned, theology is summoned to buttress or demon demolish belief. An exercise which renders belief irrelevant and adds to the desperate of Fifth Avenue or in on any on any afternoon. The people moving homeless through the city, praying to find sanctuary before the sky, and the towers come tumbling down. Before the earth opens, as it does in Superman, they know that no one will appear to turn back time. They know it. Just as they know that the earth has opened before and will open again. Just as they know that their empire is falling, is doomed. Nothing can hold it up. Nothing. We are not talking about belief. Hi, I'm Ilionette and I'm going to be reading The Darkest Hour by James Baldwin. The darkest hour is just before the dawn, and that I see which does not guarantee power to draw the next breath, nor abolish the suspicious, that the brightest hour we will ever see occurs just before we cease to be. Thank you. My name is Renata Krumer, originally from Russia. James Baldwin, Imagination. Imagination creates the situation. And then the situation creates imagination. It may, of course, be the other way around. Columbus was discovered, but what he found. Hello, I'm Regina, also known as Reggie. I'm a poet and youth worker in the city of Poughkeepsie. And this is the James Baldwin quote that I picked out. Children have never been good at listening to their elders, but they have never failed to imitate them. Hi, my name is Armando and I am originally from Washington Heights, but am currently living in San Diego, California. I am reading the first section of James Baldwin's poem, Staggerly Wonders. One, I always wondered what they think the niggers are doing while they, the pink and alabaster pragmatists, are containing Russia and defining and redefining and realigning China, nobly restraining themselves meanwhile from blowing up that earth which they have already blasphemed into dung, the gentle, wide-eyed, cheerful ladies and their men nostalgic for the noble cause of Vietnam, nostalgic for noble causes aching nobly to wade through the blood of savages. Ah! Uncas shall never leave the reservation except to purchase whiskey at the state liquor store. The Panama Canal shall remain forever locked. There is a way around every treaty. We will turn the ideas we will turn the tides of the restless Caribbean. The sun will rise and set on our hotel balconies as we see fit. The natives will have nothing to complain about. Indeed, they will begin to be grateful. We will be better off than ever before. They will learn to def defer gratification and save up for things like we do. Oh yes, they will. We have only to make an, eff an offer they cannot refuse. This flag has been planted on the moon. It will be interesting to see what steps 
the moon will take to be revenge for this quite breathtaking presumption. This people masturbate in winding sheets. They have hacked their children to pieces. They have never honored a single treaty made with anyone anywhere. The walls of their cities are as foul as their children. No wonder their children come at them with knives. Mad Charlie's man son was one of their children and he got his shit together. By the time he left kindergarten and for and as for Patty, heiress of all the ages, she had the greatest vacation of an any heiress where anywhere. Golly Willikers. Mom, real guns, and they come with a real big black funky stud too. Oh, Ma, he's making an eye at me. Oh, noble Duke Wayne, be careful in them happy hunting grounds. They say the only good Indian is a dead Indian. But what I say is, you can't be too careful, you hear? Oh, towering Ronnie Reagan, wise and resigned lover of Redwoods, Deeply beloved, winning man-child of the yearning republic from diaper to football field to Warner Brothers sound stages, be thou our grinning, gentle, phallic, big boy of all the ages. Salt peanuts, salt peanuts, for dear hearts and gentle people, and cheerful, shining, simple Uncle Sam. Nigger, read this and run. Now, if you can't read, run anyhow. From Manifest Destiny, Cortez and all his men silent upon a peak in Darien to a decent interval, and the chopper rises above Saigon, abandoning noble cause and the people we have made ignoble and whom leave, live, leave there now to die, one moves with all deliberate speed into the South China Sea and beyond, where millions of new niggers await glad tidings. No, said the great man's lady. I'm against abortion. I always feel that killing somebody, well, that what about capital punishment? I think the death penalty helps. That's right. Up to our ass and niggers on death Oh, oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. I imagine that one of the reasons people cling to their hates so stubbornly is because they sense once hate is gone, they will be forced to deal with pain. Quote by James Baldwin. My name is Liv. Um, I'm from Poughkeepsie, New York, and this is The Darkest Hour by James Baldwin. The darkest hour is just before the dawn, and that I see which does not guarantee power to draw the next breath, nor abolish the suspicion that the brightest hour we will ever see occurs just before we cease to be.